Why are we talking about a post-pandemic resignation boom? And what about you? Are you fed up with your job? Just want to quit the job and move on? Because if you are, then watch this video first so that ultimately you achieve the desired outcome that you want. In today's video, we'll talk about a couple of things. We talk about the reasons why we may choose to quit our jobs now. Think about a few alternatives and options that we have out there. And even if we decide to go for it and quit our job, about the right way how to do it. I like to cover four reasons why people are leaving their jobs. Reason number one are those who actually thought about leaving their job long before the pandemic started. Group number two are those who may have been furloughed over the last year or year and a half. They started to explore alternatives and now that they see that some of the alternatives are working, they think this is the right time to take them full time and leave their old life behind. Number three, there is a large group that I think we don't recognize that so much yet, but we will. And those are people who haven't been furloughed, who have worked through the last year, year and a half, but they've worked through far more stringent circumstances. And a lot of the things that they had to go through were quite exhausting mentally and personally. And for those reasons, some of these people now say, well, we are fed up, we are exhausted. We are grateful to have a job for sure, but we can't go on like this. And then there's a fourth group of people who just grew accustomed to the lifestyle during the pandemic. Maybe you don't have to commute anymore. Maybe you don't have to attend so many meetings. And now that things are opening up, the company asks you to go back to reinstall some of those meetings. And you feel that you don't want to do that anymore. And so that's a good enough reason to quit your job as well. Which of the category do you fall into? And maybe your case is completely different. Either way, let me know in the comment section below. So let's go through those scenarios together just to make sure that we are asking ourselves the right questions. The first group were those who thought about leaving their job before the pandemic. And if that's the case, then maybe situations haven't changed much. Maybe you're even keener to leave your job. But before you do that, I'd still encourage you to ask two questions. The first is just to explore what things have changed over the year, year and a half. Maybe some of the things that have developed are now more comfortable. So is there a change in your attitude? The second question is to think also about the industry that you are working in, because maybe that industry has been affected during the pandemic. And if that is the case, then I'm sure you had some sort of backup plan before the pandemic hit where you wanted to apply to other employers and into a new environment. Just make sure that during the pandemic, those opportunities are still out there, that they haven't changed. And also make sure that you are still up to speed with what's prevalent in your industry, what's needed so that you can apply with the right mindset and to the right employer. The second group is probably the largest group. And those are those who were furloughed, who explored alternatives because you've got a lot of time on your hands. And maybe some of the things that you started proved to be quite successful. And so now you think, well, if it was so successful, why don't I make this my full time job? Again, I would encourage you to ask one question, though, and that is whether the end of the pandemic changes the demand of the service or the side hustle that you started over the last year or year and a half. Third group were those who just were a little bit exhausted from all the things that we had to go through over the last year. And if that's you, it can be so tempting to just leave everything behind, not having to think about it, leave all the responsibilities and want nothing to do with it. Before you do, think about this. A lot of companies out there today offer career break options. And that means that for a period of time, maybe one year, sometimes two years, you are on unpaid leave. And you can also pursue other jobs if that is something you wanted to do. You can travel, you can do whatever you want. But after the one or two year period, you will go back into your company, not necessarily the same exact role, but you're still guaranteed a job. And especially when you feel a little bit exhausted, when you feel that you need to prioritize your life at this point in time, then this may be a very valid option. And even if your company doesn't offer such an option to you, 
maybe it's worthwhile having a conversation. So what about those who just grew comfortable during the pandemic, where you don't have to commute, where you don't have to dress out of your tracksuit, you can stay at home, you can work from home? Well, I would please encourage you to at least give it a couple of weeks before you make this big decision of quitting your job. Because I totally get it. I don't want to sit on trains and tubes. I don't want to waste my time with the commute. But we very quickly forget the benefits of it as well. The social aspects of being in an office, maybe the uncluttered environment, maybe the creativity that comes from working together with other people. Now you made your decision, you are out of there, you quit your job. This is the right time to tell your boss what a bastard she is. Not so quick. We see a huge amount of what today we call boomerang employees. And for one reason or another, after a period of time, they come back to the same organization. And I'm sure you don't want to work in an organization where you called your old boss a bastard. So. By all means, leave on good terms. Make a point of it that you explain to your employer that some of your priorities have changed. Some of the ways how you wish to live your life have changed for now. And it's nothing that the employer did, but something that you need to explore at this point in time. Change is really hard and can be very scary. But what is even scarier to me is the amount of people who just stick with the status quo because we are too afraid of change. And this is what this channel is about. So if you do get value out of this video, please do drop me a like. It really helps a ton. Subscribe to the channel if it's for you. And if you want to employ some other strategies of how to deal with change, how to make sense of your emotions, then watch the video that is on the screen right now. Look forward to seeing you there and in the next video.